Okay, I'd like to talk about pyrolytic sin eliminations, which are, are an alternative to the usual anti-eliminations that we've seen previously. <coughs> and these are a good way to make alkenes under conditions uh, which uh, avoid strong base and strong acid. So. And certain ones that decompose to alkenes are uh, things like acetate esters. So a good example of this would be, uh, well, here's a general so I've drawn an example out here that shows how it's stereospecific. The syn transition state is very similar to the transition state you get in a Diels-Alder reaction. Uh, you have um, a, an aromatic transition state with six electrons moving around and you end up with acetic acid being lost uh, I meant to draw that earlier with this reaction acetic acid is lost and the other product is exclusively the Z alkene because um, the syn transition state constrains it to just forming this one isomer if you were to have the phenyl and the H flipped here, you'd get explicitly the Z isomer of the alkene. But 300 to 500 degrees Celsius is pretty hot, and some things may uh, decompose, give tars under those conditions. So I'm going to talk next about some techniques to help avoid that and some reactions that work at lower temperatures than this acetate ester reaction. So, one of these techniques for avoiding decomposition is FVP, which is flash vacuum pyrolysis. And there are two ways that this helps to reduce the, the decomposition. On the one hand, you have the flash part. So what you want to do is do the reaction quickly. And if you do it quickly uh, with a, a really high temperature, the molecule decomposes in a unimolecular reaction. It doesn't have a chance to bump into a, another molecule it's just decomposed quickly by itself. So, in other words, a short time at a high temperature is better than a longer time at a moderate temperature for avoiding side reactions. So, in this method, we pass a vapor down a tube and expose it to a hot spot for just a few seconds. And in those few seconds, it'll all of it will decompose. You don't give it a long time. The other aspect of it to reduce the decomposition is low concentration because if you want to suppress a bimolecular reaction of two of these acetate ester molecules hitting each other and then polymerizing or whatever they do, or maybe a product molecule and an, another acetate coming together, uh, to avoid that, you keep them far apart, which means uh, low concentration. So the chances of them bumping into each other are greatly reduced. And 
So what you do it is put the tube under vacuum and only introduce a small amount of the substance at a time. And again, that reduces the chances of decomposition. So the reaction can happen quickly and cleanly and less chance of side reactions. I shouldn't say no chance, less. So another approach, of course, is to find something that decomposes at a lower temperature than the uh, acetate esters. So I'm going to talk about some of those next, which are um, a little bit harder to make than acetate esters, but allow you to use more normal techniques, just heating in a test tube or heating in a flask to uh, run the reaction. Okay, so the first of these is the Chugayev reaction, uh, which uses something called a xanthate ester, which sounds very uh, fancy, but is actually very easy to make. We start with an alcohol. Um, We react that with base, and the base makes an O minus on here, and then we add CS2. Now, CS2 is something quite familiar to me. Um, my old company in England used to work with it, and had a big tank out the back. Very nasty stuff. It's not only a bit poisonous, it's extremely prone to catching on fire. Its boiling point is around 40 degrees or something, uh, I think. But it spontaneously catches fire above about 110, 120 Celsius. It's surprisingly low. So it's very dangerous to work with, uh, but it is very cheap. It's actually just made from carbon and sulfur at high temperatures. So a nasty liquid to work with, uh, but uh, cheap to do. This. And so you can make something then like this. And there's your, uh, that's a xanthate salt there. <coughs> and You can add an alkyl halide or an alkyl, um, you could use any uh, alkylating uh, agent like that, methyl tosylate, something like that. But So this is our xanthate ester. It's similar to a carbonate ester, except with two of the oxygens have been replaced by sulfur. And if we heat this to around um, between 100 to 200 degrees Celsius, this will do a similar reaction to what we saw with the acetates. And Give us the alkene. And it will also give us uh, something uh, that looks a bit weird, like this. And in fact, this then decomposes itself to, to give uh, 
these two products here, which are rather nasty and smelly, but uh, for a small scale, this is a useful uh, reaction. Uh, you're going to uh, lower the temperature a lot compared to what you did with the acetate tester. But there are some methods uh, that can go even lower temperatures. 